Pleased to be joined once again by infectious disease specialist, Dr. Dale Kalina. You know, it is kind of weird to be say, pleased to be joined by an infectious disease specialist, but I enjoy our chats. Likewise, thanks for having me back, Jason. So let's do a COVID update. Obviously it has been the hot topic for literally years now, but this summer has felt great. The summer has felt, dare I say, normal. Are we officially post pandemic now? So no, but I think that the way that we are starting to operate is starting to give some semblance of yes, normalcy, which I think is delightful, um, but also it's giving us ideas of where it is that we're going to move forward and, and what tools we need, I think, to do just that. And, and I think we're seeing a lot of that this summer. Of course, we saw that uh, infants can now get vaccinated against COVID. That's going to help. Uh, we've seen um, the hospital system, yeah, struggling right now, in part because of COVID, but also because of uh, work shortages and, and things like that, which is going to be a challenge as things to come, particularly with respect to COVID. And lastly, we've seen other public health measures um, you know, coming and going and being given more to to the independent person uh, to decide to wear a mask to protect people around them and things like that. And that's where I'm expecting we're going uh, over the course of the next few months. And that's actually where I wanted to go next. I mean, at this point where we are now, if someone feels symptoms and tests positive on a rapid test, is it even worth going to a hospital or a doctor or do you just immediately say, hey, I'm going to not be around anyone else at this point. Yeah, so that depends on who you are. If if you have symptoms and you've got COVID and you're fully vaccinated, don't have any uh, other comorbidities or other diseases, then for all intents and purposes, you know, shelter in place, get some chicken noodle soup. Um, but if you fall into a category where maybe the vaccines don't work very well for you because your immune system doesn't work very well, um, or are in a higher risk category because of other conditions that you might have, or say if you're unvaccinated, these are all good reasons to reach out to your healthcare provider, uh, or if you're feeling really unwell at any point in time, yeah, to come into the hospital. Because the reality is we have a lot of medications to help you with COVID. Different medications like antivirals are indicated for people whose immune systems aren't great, or who we'd expect to have a tougher time with COVID or to have severe disease. Um, but then we also have other medications like immunosuppressants or oxygen that we can give you if you need them, if you're struggling. And that's what we do in the hospitals. So I think everyone at this point is familiar with the rapid test. We've all had them. You can get them at the drugstore, at the grocery store, on the street corner, probably. Who knows? When it comes to those rapid tests, when you have tested positive, do you have to wait till you go out again, till there is absolutely no second line? Because speaking from personal experience, I felt fine before that second line disappeared, and there was a long time in between. Yeah, and you're very right to say that. I think that everybody's a little bit different, of course. Um, and for all intents and purposes, what we've seen with evidence of, of viral loads and of COVID infectivity, we've seen that the virus tends to still be able to infect people up to the seven day mark and sometimes to the 10 day mark. And that's where you saw a lot of the uh, policies for infection prevention and control developed initially. Now, there have, of course, been some changes from a public health Ontario perspective um, to stop isolating at day five. But I will say, uh, particularly if you're still swabbing positive and still have that second line that you said, um, past that day five, uh, you're still likely infectious. So that's where you're seeing people that are starting to test again at kind of day five to seven and starting to test until they clear. And I do think that that's a prudent way to help keep the people around you as safe as possible. And finally, let's talk the fourth shot, AKA the second booster. What is the urgency of this? Should we be lining up like we did for shots one, two in the first booster? Or is this just a matter of when we see our you know, GP the next time we say, hey, let's get the poke in the arm? So I uh, will couch everything I say in the fact that I absolutely love vaccines. I think that they are the single best tech innovation over the course of the past you know, 200 years. The fact of the matter is, a full course of a COVID vaccine uh, course for most adults is three doses. 
and for most kids it's two doses and that's based on how kids immune systems differ from adults we often give vaccines uh, in higher frequencies or more doses to adults because our immune systems just aren't as good as kids are mm -hmm. if your immune system is a little bit worse so if you've got an immunodeficiency if you take medications that suppress your immune system like chemotherapy things like that whether you're a kid or an adult i think it's a good idea to add an extra dose onto that primary series of the vaccine, your two or three doses. So that does mean for kids, it would be three doses, and for adults, it would be four. Yeah. Now, if you are your average adult without any other conditions, I think three doses are really good and will protect you very well against the important things, hospitalization, death, um, severe disease, things like that. But I think as we move forward, uh, I've heard a lot of uh, rumors of the of newer vaccines that are being developed against Omicron and against newer variants. And I expect to get a little bit more information about that in the coming kind of weeks to months um, prior to the next cold and flu season I'm expecting. So if you want to get a fourth dose, go for it. Is there going to be that much benefit for the things that I care about most, hospitalization, death? For most people, no. Um, but it is an individual decision. This isn't the everybody needs to get it uh, sort of situation that it was before. Um, but I think that if you are interested in getting it, it's always a great idea. All right. Appreciate the advice. And when we go weeks and months and you get that new info, look forward to chatting again. Thanks so much. As always, thanks for having me.